In this video, I'll play for you my solo piano version of a song called Leur Exquise by Reynaldo Hahn using the poetry of Paul Verlaine. This is originally written for piano and voice and has been performed in lots of different keys. I chose one of them, B major, to make my version. Later on in this video, I'll give you a note by note tutorial so that you can play it too if you like it. Now, when I was making my piano version, I kept in mind that I wanted it to sound very close to the original, but I also wanted it to be playable by less experienced pianists. And so you'll see that it's not exactly easy, but it's not hard either if you're willing to put in the work. And with my tutorial, I'll give you lots of different ways that you can think about this music that involves using patterns so you're not just trying to remember one note after another. When I play it for you, you'll see the lyrics on the screen and they'll be in French, but I'll also show you translations in English. One thing to keep in mind is that when songs are translated from one language to another, the translation is not an exact word-for-word -word translation because the translation has to sound good in the new language. It has to make sense in the new language while keeping the, the general meaning of the song intact. So if you're a French speaker and you see that the translation is not exactly word-for-word, -word, then you know why. Even though I'm going to show you a note-by-note -note tutorial, I suggest you also get the sheet music, which is linked below. It's very inexpensive and it will save you a lot of time because it will give you a map that you can follow. And when I give you those uh, patterns that you should think about, you can actually mark them in the sheet music. It's only two pages. I don't know how much Music Notes is selling it for, but it's really low price. <laughs> I want to thank my awesome viewer in Australia who requested this version and this tutorial. And I also want to thank you, awesome viewer, for your very generous contribution to my channel. All right, so I'll play it for you first and then we'll get started with the tutorial.
All right, so I've split up this song into five sections. And within those sections, there are patterns that the left hand plays repeatedly, like throughout. And there are patterns that the right hand plays. So what I'm going to do is first show you the left hand patterns. Um, and then we'll start learning the left hand in section one. And then every time that pattern comes around, I'll say, hey, remember pattern number one or pattern number two? We're using it here. The reason this is important is because it helps you keep track of all the information that is inside this piece. So you don't have to see every single measure like a new event, right? Uh, and then I'll do the same thing for the right hand. I'll say, hey, here's a pattern that the right hand uses. Remember it, and we're going to have it occur throughout. And then we'll put the hands together. And then I'll show you a one way of pedaling. As far as fingering goes, people always want to know what is the correct fingering. The answer is always there is no correct fingering. The correct fingering is whatever fingering works for you, okay? So I don't know if you were watching my fingering at all. I wasn't really thinking about fingering. You can afford to do that when you've spent a lot of time practicing scales and arpeggios and learning a whole bunch of different pieces. So basically what happens is you teach your hand, your hands, your body, the musical language, and it starts to kind of, your hands start to kind of know where to go. That being said, there are places where things get kind of tricky and you do want to work out fingering. So if you're not yet at the place where the fingering just kind of happens by itself, that's okay. Uh, I recommend that you actually work on your technique. Um, I have a couple of really great courses, Not Your Mama's Scales, Not Your Mama's Arpeggios, that will lead you through a whole bunch of different patterns so that when they come up inside a piece or a song, it won't be brand new information for you that you have to like learn right off the bat, right? Okay, so I'll link those below if you're interested. Um, all right, and then um, I'll show you a few different kinds of fingerings that you can use, experiment, and find the ones that work for you, okay? So I'm gonna show you the first left-hand pattern. I'm gonna be super creative and call it left-hand pattern number one, <laughs> okay? And this pattern won't be exactly the same every time it comes around. It will might be somewhat um, expanded or you might use a different fingering or whatever, but the pattern is two notes in a row, and it is B, F sharp, okay? Sometimes you might use 5-1, sometimes you might use 5-2, and the reason for those changes is basically what comes after it. So if nothing comes after it and we're just hanging on, go ahead and use 5-1 if you want. But if we're going to move on from it, you know, to something else, you might wanna try 5-2. All right, so learn that pattern. Pattern number one, uh, here's middle C, here's the C below, so we're like right there, okay? So pause the video and just kind of make note mentally, or even write it down, B, F sharp. If you're looking at the sheet music, it's the very first two notes of the piece. Um, it's a really good idea to have the music that you can just kind of look at it, right? Okay, so B, F sharp is pattern number one. Pattern number two is very similar. It's two notes, and it is G sharp, D sharp. And again, fingering, you could do 5-1 if nothing else is coming after it, or you could do 5-2 if we've got other things, or even 5-3, depending on where we're going, the size of your hand, um, how flexible you are you know, with your fingers, how much agility you have, okay? Those are the two patterns I want you to learn in the left hand before you go any further. I know it's easy, so um, it's a really good idea to practice them like this. For example, put your hand on your lap, <laughs> and then if I say, all right, play pattern one, you go right to it. Put your hand on your lap, play pattern two, go right to it. So pause the video here, Practice that a few times. Just kind of say one or two, mix them up. It play, may, you might even play them in different parts of the piano, but we're just going to play them right where I showed you. All right, so pause the video, do it. It's the fastest way to learn and know which pattern is which. Then move on. 
Ready? All right. Left hand starts with pattern number one. Uh, and because there's nothing coming after it, like going up, I'm just going to use 5-1. You can use that or whatever fingering you want. There's no right fingering. It just has to work for you. Right after we play pattern, pattern one, we're going to play pattern two. <laughs> then we play pattern one again. See how easy it is if you know the patterns? Now, next we have pattern two, but we move on from it. So in this case, I might do five, three. So we do pattern two and then we move on to B, A sharp, G, D sharp, G sharp, D sharp. Oh, I do want to say, uh, if you're afraid of sharps, <laughs> don't be. Um, we have five sharps here in the key of B major. So basically, what you the way you can think of it, B major is very easy. You play every single black key that you see. The only white keys you play are B and E. That's it. Everything else is a black key. We'll have some accidentals coming up later in the song, but in the key of B, that's how I want you to think about it. You know, don't don't think like, okay, what are the sharps? F sharp, C sharp. No, every black key you see on the piano, you're going to use those sharps. <laughs> We're very lucky to have them all laid out like this, right? Like if you play clarinet, I don't know. I don't know how you would remember it, but. <laughs> um, so all the black keys, C sharp, D sharp, F sharp, G sharp, B sharp, uh, A sharp, A sharp. And then the only white keys, unless we have accidentals, are B and E, okay? So going back, we're now on measure four, which is when that um, uh, pattern, <laughs> Pattern number two happens, right? And we're going to move on from it. So G sharp, D sharp, B. Now, these are all going to be sharps. A sharp, G sharp, D sharp. Another fingering you could use is just pick up your thumb. See, what happens is you kind of anchor that D sharp. You don't hold on to it, but you kind of hover above it. Move your thumb like that you could do that all right whatever works for you like that or or any other variable okay so that's four measures done let's practice those four measures before we play let's organize our thoughts pattern one pattern two pattern one pattern two but moving on with that little tag at the end Ready? Here we go. Pattern one. Pattern two. Pattern one. Now, pattern two with that tag. B, A sharp, G sharp, D sharp. Pause here. Practice that much. When you can play it, don't worry too much about the beats right now. When you can play it smoothly, come back. We're going to move on. All right. We're moving on now. <laughs> Measure five. Pattern one, pattern two, but we're going to move on. Does that look familiar? It was part of that tag we added on, remember? In measure four. So we just leave out that B and do that. So if you've got the music, which I highly recommend, measure four and measure six are almost exactly the same. Measure four has that B, measure six does not have the B. Watch, measure four. Measure six. You see it, you hear it? That's something you can remember. The first time it happens, put the B in. The second time it happens, leave out the B. All right, now we're on measure seven, play pattern one. Measure eight, play pattern two exactly the same way you did it in measure six. Okay, so let's play five, six, measures five, six, seven, and eight. Okay, so pattern one, then pattern two with that tag leaving out, let me use third finger, leaving out that B. Back to pattern one. And then pattern two with the tag, leaving out the B, same as what, what we just did. Okay, I know I'm 
I'm going kind of fast, but if you've learned those patterns, you should be able to at least keep up mentally. Now, you will definitely have to pause and practice because understanding up here happens pretty fast for most people who are interested in this. But putting it into your body requires repetition. We call that practice, although practicing isn't just repetition, right? It's understanding what we just talked about. All right, pause here and practice that. Now, if you have done as I said, you should be pretty good at the first line and the second line. We're just going to put them together. I'm not going to talk a whole lot. We start with pattern one. Pattern two. Pattern one. Pattern two with a tag. I use a different fingering, give you different options. Pattern one. Pattern two with the tag leaving out the B. Pattern one. Pattern two. Tag leaving out the B. Okay? Practice that. So you want to practice the first line by itself, the second line by itself. Practice lines one and two, one after the other. If you have seen my video with the three coin game, use the three coin game. You haven't seen the three coin game video I'm gonna link it over here you need to go watch it pause this go watch it on an, in an, another uh, window or another tab and then come back to this video okay all right once you've got once you've learned lines one and two we've got one more line to go in this section now we've got something we haven't seen before this is brand new we left off here, we're going to go down one octave. That's eight notes. So, so down to the D sharp, A sharp, D sharp, F sharp. So you see that's brand new. We've not seen that. That you'll have to remember. If you know about chords, it's a D sharp minor triad. That's all it is. It's an arpeggio. Okay. Now, after you do that, we come back to pattern two with the tag leaving out the B. We already know this. See how good it is, no patterns. So let's, let's do that. The brand new thing, the D sharp minor arpeggio. And then the same as measure six or measure eight. Okay, now we've got Pattern one again, and then we just add one note on top, B. See why it's important to have the sheet music? There's a lot of similarities that are slightly different, right? It's a really good idea to have that in front of you. Even if you don't read sheet music, because you can make note like, hey, here's pattern one, but add a note. Okay, and we've got one more measure to go, which is measure 12. And guess what? You tell me what this is. Have we seen that before? Tell me what is it? It's the same that we had in measure 6, measure 8, measure 11, measure 13, this one. So lots of use out of this one. Let's play this line one time from this brand new D sharp minor arpeggio. Here we go. All right. Now here's that recurring thing we've got. Pattern 2. Okay, now pattern one, but add a B on it. Okay, pattern two with that tag. All right, so this is all of section one. You basically know about a, th a quarter of the song now of the left hand. I want you to make sure that you can play it really well, just the left hand by itself, before you go on to learn the right hand. All right, play it from the beginning until here, and then move on to the next part of this video. All right, let's learn the right hand. The right hand also has patterns. The very first pattern, uh, pattern one, again, very creative around here. I don't know, let's call it Fred. Fred is five notes and basically the notes are b c sharp d sharp f sharp 
not in that order, but those are the notes. And the fingering is going to be different depending on, again, where we are, where we're coming from, where we're going to, what we're adding to it. So one fingering you can use is this, starting on the third finger, D sharp, F sharp, B, C sharp, D sharp. So we're basically starting about halfway through the group of notes. We go up to the top note, then we go down to the bottom note, and then we walk our way back to our starting note. Bum, 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 right? So could be fingering like this, depending if we're going on, could be this. You'll have to do some experimentation here. So pause the video and learn pattern number one. Do it. All right, pattern number two. Again, this one also will come around looking exactly like this or somewhat uh, amended, somewhat very varied, a variation. And this one is, again, a group of notes. These are the notes. D sharp, F sharp, G sharp, A sharp, B. And the way it looks again is we start kind of in the middle, we go to the top note, we step down, we skip that guy, all the way down. So what that looks like, G sharp, B, A sharp, G sharp, D sharp, F sharp, okay? Those are the notes. So. practice that. Okay? That's group two or pattern two. Make sure you're when you're practicing, you practice pra uh, pattern one and then pattern two. Kind of mix them up so that you know them, you know, like that. Okay? The way it goes from the beginning, we play pattern one, then pattern two. Then we play pattern one again, this time slightly different. Instead of playing just one note here, I'm going to be add a B underneath it. Okay? From here, we just play three Ds in a row. And then F sharp. Then we play pattern one. See that? All right, so now we're, we're on beat one of measure six. So let's do from the beginning. Um, Hopefully you have the sheet music. If not, I hope you have a good memory. Okay, so here you go. That's pattern one, pattern two. Pattern one. Now add a B underneath it. Then three D sharps in a row. F sharp, pattern one. Okay, pause here and practice that. When you're ready, the next thing that happens is B, D sharp two times, and then F sharp. And then you play pattern one again. Okay, then we play that D again, this time add a B underneath it, then two more Ds. D sharp, sorry. So if you're looking at the music, we're on measure eight. If you look right above it, measure four, the right hand looks very similar, right? Measure four and measure eight. I'll leave it to you to figure out how they're slightly different, okay? So practice that. And then when you're ready, come back. We'll play it from the beginning. Here we go. Pattern one. Pattern two. Pattern one, add that B underneath, now three D sharps. F sharp, pattern one. B, then two D sharps. F sharp, pattern one. Three D sharps, but the first one has a B underneath it. Okay, when you can play that, you're gonna come back. We're gonna move on. We've got four more measures to go. All right, here we go. A sharp, F sharp. Now, 
F sharp, A sharp, D sharp, D sharp again. Okay? So A sharp and F sharp. Then you keep those two notes, play them one at a time, and add a D sharp later. Repeat that D sharp, then B, D sharp. Now we're gonna have sort of a repetition of pattern one. I'm calling it 1A, I'll show you why. So we start like this. Instead of going right to the B, we just repeat that F sharp again, then we continue pattern one. Okay, so it looks like this. Pattern one was, right? This one is, okay? And then you finish it off with a B. So let's play from measure nine, A sharp, F sharp. Now you split up those notes, top one first, then D sharp. Play that D sharp again, B, D sharp. Now. Pattern 1A. And then B. Okay? Practice that right hand. Practice the left hand. When you come back, we're going to put everything together nice and slow. Here we go. Do not add the pedal until you can play it. But I'm gonna go ahead and play with the pedal and tell you where I'm changing the pedal. If you don't know what change a pedal means, watch my pedaling tutorial, linking it here. Basically change is up and down, okay? But this is not a pedaling tutorial video, so um, that's all I'm gonna say about it. It's up to you to go and educate yourself, okay? Do not leave me angry comments. <laughs> all right, so I'm gonna put my pedal down, but if you're not sure yet what to play, don't later you come back and watch this all right so the, i'm put down the pedal play the left hand notes first then the right hand notes now we're on measure two we're on the brink of measure two as soon as i play these new notes together i'm going to change the pedal change Then hands together here, and then as soon as you play, change the pedal. Here we're gonna play together and change the pedal. Now we're on measure five, play and change as soon as you play. Have now learned once you can play this you have learned about a quarter of the piece no nope, actually exactly a quarter of the piece <laughs> congratulations will it take practice yes <laughs> okay when you're ready move on to section two all right we ended section one with the left hand on D sharp. Now here, we don't, um, in this line of music, these next four measures, we don't have any of the patterns that we've learned before, but there's not that many notes either, and you know if you're looking at the, the music. So we start with C sharp, and then G sharp, and then C sharp. That's it. That's the first measure of this section, measure 13. So play it again, C sharp, G sharp, C sharp. 
Then we've got an accidental. We've got G natural going to G sharp. Okay? Just that. Next measure, we've got F sharp, C sharp, F sharp. Okay, so let's add one more note. The next measure is F sharp. So let's play measures 13 through 16. Here we go, C sharp first. Then next measure, G sharp, uh, sorry, G, G sharp. Then F sharp. And down to F sharp. All right, so review this part of the video as many times as you need to, okay? And then when you're ready, move on. Now we are on measure 17, so we ended up F sharp. Guess what? This is measure, this is the same as pattern one, but since we're not gonna stay there, I'm gonna go ahead and do this. See that? B, F sharp, that's pattern one. We're gonna now extend it, okay? And then if you're looking at the music, you'll see an F sharp there with RH written above it. That means the right hand's gonna play the, that note, so we're gonna skip it. And then moving on, B, C sharp, and then G sharp and D sharp. So let's play just that much. Pattern one, but moving on. Leave out that F sharp. B, C sharp, then G sharp and D. The next thing, thing that we do is pattern one exactly as we know it. Yay. Then pattern two, but with that little tag that you already know. You know that one, right? Yeah. So let's play from beginning of measure 17 through 20. Here we go. Pattern one, just as we know it. And then pattern two with that little tail. Okay? All right, so practice that. Put it together with the first part of the section. Come back when you're ready to move on. All right, guess what? This is going to be super familiar. We're on measure 21. Here we go. Pattern one. Just add a beat to it, okay? Then pattern two with that tail. Come on, we know it now. Okay? From there, we're gonna add something that we've learned before, which is that D sharp minor arpeggio. And if you're looking at the music, you see two more notes, but what do you also see? RH above, right hand, okay? So we don't play those notes, and then Oh my goodness, not another one of these. Yes. Come on, that's an old friend by now, right? All right, so playing from the beginning of measure 21 is pattern one, but add a B to it. Then pattern two with that tag that we know so well. Then we have that re repetition of the D sharp minor arpeggio. and leave out those next two notes. Then that uh, pattern two with a tag. So easy. All right, practice that. Come back when you're ready for the right hand. Right hand left off on B. So we're gonna play E. Here we're gonna have some new stuff that we haven't seen before. So the composer is like developing the tune here. Then you repeat that E and add a G sharp on top. Then B sharp, C sharp, E. Please don't come at me with, this is not B sharp, this is C. I'm not having that conversation. <laughs> B sharp, C sharp, E, okay? Then you play a C sharp minor arpeggio. C sharp, E, G sharp. Okay, so let's play those two measures, starting on E, E and G sharp, B sharp, C sharp, E. Then C sharp, E, G sharp. You play that G sharp again and add an E underneath it. 
Now we're going to play this chord, C sharp, E, A sharp. Okay? All together. Then remember that B sharp, C sharp, we're going to do it again. Hold that C sharp, and around it you're going to add A sharp and F sharp. So it looks like this. We came from here. If that's really hard for you to hold on to the C sharp, don't worry about it. Let it go. But if you can, do it. Okay? So, and then uh, let's, let's go back and start at measure 13, which is the beginning of this section. E. Play that E again. Add a G sharp on top. Then B sharp, C sharp, E. Then C sharp minor chord broken. Play that G sharp again and add an E on the underneath. Now the chord, C sharp, E, A sharp. Back to B sharp, C sharp. If you can, hold on to that C sharp and add A sharp and F sharp around it. Okay? Moving on. E sharp, F sharp, D sharp. And here is where you see that left hand note that has our H on top of it, F sharp. Just play to let it go. So, okay, pause here and practice that much. When you come back, we'll move on. So here we've got, moving on, uh, the second pattern, pattern two. Okay, so that's all you play. And then you play pattern one. Now we're at the beginning of measure 20. We've seen this before. This measure is exactly the same as measure 8. So look at your sheet music, measure 8. Okay. Now we're at measure 21. D sharp, B, C sharp, D sharp. Kind of like pattern 1, but not exactly. Then... This measure, measure 22, is exactly the same as measure 6, which is exactly the same as measure 10, right? So look on your sheet music and just kind of circle those and say those are the same. Then we move on to F sharp. And then we've got those two notes in the left hand that we have to play with the right hand. A sharp, D sharp, okay? And then measure... 24 is the same as measure 8 and measure 18. Okay? So practice that. When you come back, we'll play all of section 2, right hand. Here we go, starting on E. C sharp minor chord. notes now here's that F sharp that's written in the left hand pattern 2 pattern 1 here's that measure that repeats a lot those two notes written in the left hand then that measure that repeats a lot oops <laughs> right practice that when you come back we'll put the hands together all right let's put the hands together so we're going to start right hand on e whatever finger you've decided to use by the way you can write down your fingering so that you can remember from one repetition to the next what you did that's very helpful so um, right hands on e left hands on c sharp here we go i'm going to put down the pedal it was holding from before so it's going to change if you're you know playing the whole thing um, but right now i'm not changing so play together now right hand takes over i change the pedal here 
Now left hand, and then right hand. You can hear the pedal sounds a little blurry, so you could change more frequently than that, okay? Use your ear when you're pedaling. Now, hands together. Right. And then together. I'm gonna change the pedal there. I'm gonna change the pedal here. Right hand's by itself. Change again, and then change here. Now the right hand takes that note. Left hand takes over. Change your pedal. Now the right hand's gonna play pattern two. As it finishes, it's gonna overlap with left hand pattern one, like this. Okay? Then the right hand pattern one. And again, it's going to overlap with left hand pattern two. Here it is. Now the right. Left hand pattern one with that extension. Left hand pattern two. Change your pedal. takes over and then pattern two left hand with that little extension we've done this measure which is measure uh, 24 both hands together the same way each time so it's 24 it's um, 20 and it's measure 8 both hands are playing the same things, so you know, each time. So when you put the hands together, it's going to be the same. So that repeated measure is something that you can just kind of tap into whenever you're playing and tell your body, hey, you already know how to do this, do it. You can even give it your own pattern number. There's so many ways to split up patterns. I didn't want to give you too many patterns to think about here. Um, <clears throat> why? Because uh, this tutorial would have been like really, really long and then you would have to memorize all these patterns. But when you do it on your own, you know, for yourself, you can give uh, like memory triggers like, you know, this is what happens here and then it happens the same way here. So you, again, you don't want to look at every event that happens like it's brand new like it's never happened before unless it really hasn't happened which you know occurs a few times in this piece all right when you're ready to move on to section three do so okay so we're in section three it's this one's really short um, the left hand left off here on D sharp, whatever finger you are using. Now we're going to play C sharp, G sharp, and then if you're looking at the sheet music, you see an E with RH above. By now you know that means the right hand's going to play that note, okay? And then left hand plays a C sharp on top, and then come back, comes back down. So basically the left hand is doing this. Just C sharp minor triad, which we've had before. Um, just not exactly like this. Okay, then we're going to go down to F sharp, C sharp, E, A sharp. Okay. Pick up. B, F sharp, D sharp. Lift. The right hand's going to play that F sharp. And then left hand plays B, C sharp, and then G sharp, D sharp. So let me show you that without talking. This is the beginning of, of section two. Okay, so basically this 
is pattern one, and then we just add onto it, right? Okay, we're almost at the end of section three. This is a really short one. We go back to something that we have already kind of played before, which is the D sharp, A sharp, F sharp. Before we had like, this time we're skipping that D sharp. We're just going D sharp, A sharp, F sharp, okay? And then just F sharp and E together. So I'll play that section without talking. This is starting at measure 25. So we did have that pattern number one in there, and then we added on to it. All right, go practice that. When you're ready for the right hand, come back. So the right hand was playing D sharp when we last saw it, <laughs> whatever finger you were using. And you're gonna hop up to G sharp. And I would maybe use third finger or second finger because I'm going to need that first finger on the E that you see coming up on beat three. So probably third finger. And then play the E that's written in the left hand. Now I'm going to play that G sharp again and step up in the key of B major to C sharp. Okay, back down to G sharp. A sharp, F sharp, E, and back to F sharp, and up all the way to D sharp. Now look, in the left hand, there's another note taken by the right hand. Here it is, F sharp. Okay, and then we play pattern two. Except this time, instead of going right to the D sharp, which is usually our last note of pattern two, we're gonna insert a B first, and then go to the D sharp. So that's what this pattern looks like. There is that added note, okay? And then we're almost there, A sharp, D sharp, F sharp, and now we have two chords. B, D sharp, G sharp together, and C sharp, E, A sharp together, like that. All right, I'll play section three, right hand without talking. Practice that, and then when you're ready to put the hands together, come on back. All right, so pedal was holding from before. As soon as I play my new notes in measure 25, the pedal will change. Here we go. Change. Now the right hand plays together. Change the pedal. Your left hand starts the pattern one. Add the note. Now the right hand plays F sharp. Left hand continues. Change your pedal. Right hand plays pattern two with that added note. There it is. Now together. play all the chords at the, or the two chords one in the right hand one in the left hand at the same time left hand holds right hand plays the next chord and I change the pedal on both of those because if I didn't 
actually it's not bad. It's a little muddy. It's, a, it's up to you. I think I like it changed. I like it clean. All right, there you go. When you can play this section, um, go ahead and add it to section one, two, and three. So you want to practice each, each section by itself and then make sure you're adding on, adding it on to what you already know, right? One link at a time. We're making a chain of knowledge. All right, we are now in section four. The left hand starts with pattern one. Easy. Now we're going to have something we haven't played yet. It goes like this. G sharp, E sharp, B. Now fingering, you can do whatever you want here. I'm going to try this fingering. A sharp, G sharp, C sharp. So let's play that together. G sharp, E sharp, B. A sharp, G sharp, C sharp. Okay? Probably a good idea to pause the video here and practice that until you can play it really well. Let me give you an alternate fingering just in case. You can do this one. Five, three, one, two, three, five. There are other ones you can do. Let's see, five, two, one. Then you can pick up your hand. And you can do four, whatever you want to do. There's not one way, as I've said a million times. <laughs> All right, next. Now we're now on measure 33. So F sharp, D sharp, F sharp. You're going to lift and then walk back. F sharp, D sharp. Okay. Next, G sharp. E sharp, G sharp, A sharp, G sharp, C sharp. These, I really recommend that you pause and learn each one by itself. So this is what this one looks like, measure 34. I'm showing you different fingering options. Let's see. Okay, that's measure 33. No, sorry, not 30, 34. Okay, next, E, C sharp, F sharp, and then walk it back, F sharp, C sharp. So there's a lot of different things happening here. This is like the, kind of like the climax of the piece. So it would make sense that there's like more harmonic movement things are moving along here, right? So you might have to spend a little more time on section four. Um, let's play that much again. So this, this is going to start at, let's start at the beginning of measure four, which is measure 31, starting with pattern one. Okay, now we've got that G sharp, F sharp, uh, sorry, G sharp, E sharp, B, A sharp, G sharp, C sharp, now we're at measure 33, F sharp, D sharp, F sharp, lift, and then walk it back. Now, G sharp, E sharp, G sharp, A, G sharp, C sharp, down to E, E, C sharp, F sharp, lift, walk it back. Don't get discouraged. This is the this is the trickiest part. Not tricky. Like this is the most complex part of the piece. Okay. Every piece has a most complex part. Okay. Now D sharp, C sharp, F sharp, A natural, C sharp, A. Let's look at that one again. This is measure thirty six. Almost there. Here's measure 37. G sharp, F sharp, D sharp, B sharp. Okay. You should pause and learn each one of these. Then measure 38. C sharp, G sharp, C sharp, E, B sharp, C sharp, E. All right. So 
Section four is most definitely the one you'll probably, most definitely probably, it's the one you probably need to spend the most time on. As I said, there are very few patterns happening here. Let me rephrase that. There are a lot of patterns in everything, but few patterns that we've established here in this, in this tutorial. But also things are moving along at a clip. So I'll just play this section for you and then, you know, you make sense of it on your own. Okay, here we go. I think I forgot to say, it starts on measure 31. Here we go. And again, if you have the sheet music, this will be a lot easier to follow. When you can play the left hand, come back for the right hand. Well, the right hand starts with pattern one. Yay, starting on D sharp. But it's that same pattern one we had um, starting on measure three, where you have the D sharp, but you also have a B underneath it. So that is exactly like measure three and four. Okay? You already know this. You just have to tell yourself which one or which, which two measures this is like. So 31 and 32 are in the right hand exactly like measures three and four. You already know it. I'll play it again. You can recognize it. Now, see where your third finger is or whichever finger you're using. You're going to keep that note and you're going to add F sharp and B all around it. Like that. B major triad. Then you play three Ds sharps in a row. Okay? Then B and C sharp. Then three, sharp, three C sharps in a row. You're going to play that C sharp again, and this time add an A sharp underneath it. Then the C sharp by itself. Then the C sharp with the A sharp. And then you step up to F sharp. Stepping, stepping up means you're playing every note. Okay? Then D sharp. Step up to, e, uh, step up to F sharp. Now you're going to play G sharp. And underneath it, you're going to put the B sharp. Okay. Play that same G sharp. And this time go up until D sharp. Then E. Back to your G sharp where you started. Now you're going to start on G natural. Up to G sharp. C sharp. E, G sharp, and play that G sharp again with E underneath it. I know there's a lot happening. That's what the pause button is for. <laughs> okay, I'll play that whole thing super slow without talking so that you can kind of make, make sense of what's happening where. So I'm starting at measure 31.
Okay? The good news is, after this, the section five is super easy. So give it your all here, knowing that you're almost at the finish line. Okay? When you're ready, let's put the hands together. All right, left hands on B, right hands on D sharp. Gonna be pattern one, pattern one, yay. So you had the pedal from before. As soon as you play that B, you're gonna change it. Change. Okay, I'm not gonna talk just so you can see what's happening here, nice and slow. Just know that you're gonna change on beat one of every measure. Here I change the pedal because the chord changes and change it here. Change there. Change. 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 All right. Again, this is this is the trickiest part. So don't worry, it's not you. <laughs> you can do it. All right, here we are at the finish line almost. It's gonna be easy from here. So left hand starts with a C sharp, then a D sharp, then an E. Easy, right? Then you go down and play F sharp octaves. Now, you play pattern number one, and you continue it, okay, and then G sharp, D sharp. So that's what this looks like. Pattern one, then pick it up, D sharp, F sharp, B, C. Do you recognize that? It's the right hand pattern one. So you start with the left hand, pattern one. The right hand's gonna be busy, so the left hand's gonna take over and play right hand pattern one. You know the notes, just have to teach your left hand. Okay? But at the end, instead of just playing D sharp, you add a G sharp underneath. So it looks like this, pattern one, left hand, pattern one, right hand, played by the left hand. And instead of just the D sharp by itself, add a G sharp underneath. Okay, and then pattern one. Now, G sharp, D sharp. Pattern one. And then the last four notes, F sharp, B, C sharp, D sharp. So, see what I mean? This one was a lot easier, right? I'll leave play it without talking, starting on C sharp. Did you notice that the chord we played up here, or the dyad, <laughs> the G-sharp, D-sharp is the same, G-sharp, D-sharp, just down an octave, so measure 40, what is that, 45, is the same as measure 47, okay? All right, that's the left hand. When you're ready, I'll be here, waiting.
right hand's gonna play the same notes that the left hand plays in this section. This is the pickup to measure 41, C sharp, D sharp, E. That's what the left hand did. From here, you play the D sharp octaves. Okay, now we're gonna fly down. Here's A sharp and E. So we're in the middle C region, play them together. Then you fly back up where you were before, play a C sharp octave, then B octave. Before I go any further, let me show you this much. So C sharp, D sharp, E, D sharp octaves, fly down, fly up, B, and now you're going to play pattern two. Instead of playing just F sharp, you add a B underneath it. Then pattern one. With a B added underneath that last note. We've done this before. Pattern two. With a B added underneath. Then D sharp, fly all the way up, B, C sharp, and D. I'll play that whole section, starting with the pickup to measure 41, no talking. That's the end. So when you're ready to put the hands together, come on back. It's very exciting. We're almost done. All right, both hands play C sharp together. And I'm adding the pedal here. Change a pedal. Change a pedal. Change the pedal. Here you can hold the pedal or change it. Actually, like it held. Then left hand takes over. Change. 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 the pedal here and you can change it on the last one if you want so pedaling it's an art right you it's pedaling isn't just for connecting notes it's to add color to add uh, mood character I have an entire course on pedaling taking you through exercises teaching you how to add the pedal when the music doesn't tell you like most music doesn't tell you right? It's inside my membership site, the All Access Pass, and you can get a seven-day free trial by clicking the link below. All right, I hope that was fun for you. I enjoyed it. I'm so happy that this was requested. It's a beautiful piece, and if you're in my Facebook group and you learn this piece, I would love to see you post it. If you're not in my Facebook group, why not? There's a link to join below. It's free. All you have to do is answer four questions. <laughs> now, if you want to learn another dreamy romantic piece, check out these videos here.